problems happen challenges happen struggles happen issues happen misunderstandings happen health crises happen financial crunches happen markets go down and that happens all of that happens happiness doesn't happen we have to make it happen because right things don't happen you have to make the right things fitness is the right thing doesn't happen you have to make fitness happen any of you want to lose any weight losing weight doesn't happen you have to make it happen not reacting when you're angry shutting that bloody mouth up doesn't happen you have to make it happen only wrong things happen automatically right things you have to make them happen they don't happen like that i'll tell you what we all react in our own ways to lose it not reacting and shutting this up doesn't happen you have to make it happen saying a sorry when somebody hurts you or forgiving somebody when somebody hurts you doesn't happen you have to make it happen need motivation watch a top 10 with believe nation Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because in my first business, I quit on my business partner. I was making 300 bucks a month and I didn't have the motivation to keep going. And the thing that got me through was studying the stories of entrepreneurs who've had massive success. And I hope that in sharing these stories with you, you find a motivation to keep going. And if I'm being honest, I still need the stories for myself today too. So today let's learn from one of the best, Gaurav Gopal Das and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number 2 stay positive. I'll tell you what the nature of problems is that it consumes our mind. Imagine a tooth which is hurting. I don't know if somebody's had their finger stuck in the, the edge of the door and the door is slammed. Good heavens it hurts like hell. And then the pain is just so all consuming the mind just focuses so much on the pain right? I think it's just the nature of problems that it draws our mind towards them like the tongue going towards the cumin seed in my tooth when it was stuck it's like gravity the law of gravity if we put this bottle up and put it up here and drop it it's going to just be pulled down yeah dragged down by the power of gravity i think there's a power of gravity existing within us as well that just natural for us to be dragged down to our issues our problems right to everything that's negative i think being being pulled into negativity is so normal it's like gravity put the bottle down it falls down you don't have to do anything but if i were to pull water up from the ground floor to the eighth floor i need a motor correct to work against gravity and i need Absolutely. conscious hard work Absolutely. to bring it there so it's so natural for the mind to feel negative and go towards the problem But if I have to look at thirty-one other teeth, I have to make a conscious choice to take my tongue away. Right. If I have to pull the water down from the ground floor to the eighth floor, I have to put a pump to pull it up. It's not easy work. It's hard work, right? But hard work pays off. That's when you like look at really saying, okay, this is fulfilling me now. And not that. Uh, and and I I definitely don't want to impose this. this principle of gratitude in a in a unrealistic way on people because sometimes misery is so intense absolutely you know when troubles are smaller you can still consciously look at the brighter side of life you know but sometimes troubles are just so intense and massive and they seem to be like mountains unmoving unshakable mountains they just stand there for ages and decades how in such a situation wouldn't it be so wild to forcefully impose the principle of gratitude on a person whose life is so acutely absorbed in intense misery right you know i call that toxic positivity it's toxic it's not natural So what does one do really? Yeah, it's just yeah, in such a situation when it's just so overwhelmingly painful, you know? My take on it is it's hard to look at the brighter side when this intense pain there. Right. But at the same time, I also feel if we are consumed by negativity with that pain and that problem and occupying our mind, 
uh, we lose the ability to deal with it the way we are meant to. Correct? So, if we could seek help, if I'm not able to see it, we could seek help of somebody. It could be professional help, or personal help, friends, whoever it could be. If we could seek help to be able to shift our attention to even the tiniest things so that that little positivity becomes the anchor to deal. Rule number three, choose happiness. How can every morning be the same? How can every afternoon be the same? How can every evening be the same? How can every day be the same? Har din alag hota hai, ghanta alag hota hai, har pal alag hota hai. Every day is a different day. And therefore they changed the greeting now. Greeting badal diya, abhi good morning nahi bolta hai koi. Happy morning. <laughs> Happy morning, sir. Happy morning. How are you doing this morning? Happy morning. Good morning, nahi bolte aaj kar. Tu good hai ki nahi malum nahi hai. Kyu bolne ka good morning? Kisi ka jhagda ho gaya patni ke saath sabere sabere. Usko ja ke bhudo chilla ya kya hai re good morning mein? <laughs> you can't say good morning because sometimes there may be nothing good in that morning. Nothing good in that day. So now the term is happy morning. Happy morning. Because whether the morning is good or not, you can still choose to be happy, right? Whether it's good or not cannot be a choice. Whether the morning is good or not for you cannot be a choice. It's not a choice for you. When you wake up, some virus may enter into your head and you get up with a high fever. It's not a choice you have. Whether the morning is good or not is not in your control. Whether the afternoon is good or not is not in your control. Whether the evening is good or not is not in your control. Whether the day is good or not is not in your control. But whether you can be happy in that moment, well, you can choose to be. When people smile, it doesn't mean things are going good. It just means that they've chosen to smile. Rule number four: Work hard. Like sometimes you find child prodigies. You know, they're like masters in singing or dancing or writing or whatever they do. Like if you see two-year-old kids when their hands work go on a piano. Spellbound. Now, don't tell me that he could learn that and master it at that age. Don't tell me. A two-year-old can't master the alphabet. Don't tell me that he mastered it by learning it. In fact, nobody taught it to him. He got it. He got it. Now, when you say he got it, don't call it genetic. How does ge- how do genes give you a music skill? You know how. So I know kids, young little kids who are like prodigies in what they do. At one and a half, at two, it's absolutely phenomenal. And then, now where is where is faith and belief here? It's rational logic that this guy has it. It's not come from learning. It's not come from reading. Nobody imparted to him. It must come from somewhere. How can there be an effect without a cause? And I can't see an immediate cause right now. So there has to be a remote cause before this. Right. You know what I mean? Whether I call it karma, whether I call it whatever, but I I can't accept an effect without a cause. It's against my rational thinking. You know. So now, if this gentleman, this little boy or little little girl, he or she. Has this incredible talent? We call it the common parlance is he or she is God gifted. Absolutely, absolutely. God gifted man. Look at the sky. Yeah. Not learned. Look at how they're doing it. So that is that to me is call it luck, call it destiny, call it karma, call it whatever. I didn't get. I didn't grab it. I got it. Matthew McConaughey when he got the Oscar. He said something phenomenal. I loved it. Uh, in fact, it's written in the book as well. He first, of course, thanked God, thanked his wife, thanked his father, thanked his mom, and he said, "I want to thank God. So I want to thank God because opportunities are not given by the human hand. I didn't seek a lot, and it came to me. How do I explain it? There's a million other people who are seeking. They don't get it. That's right." And I don't seek, and I get it. What am I going to explain it by? You know, you know what I mean. Now, what that little one does with that talent, or what that, what this gentleman does, or this lady does with the opportunity that has come, 
is my free will or my choice whether to drive right or to drive left or to not drive right correct but the car for a lot of people was given yes. correct yes. now uh, that free will part is where i often like to quote i say uh, i don't know who said it but it's a beautiful quote it says when hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard <laughs> absolutely you know yeah. so now the talent came to you when you were two but if you don't do nothing with it it has no meaning it has no meaning so you didn't drive the car yeah. you grossly abused the fantastic gift the car that you were given absolutely correct and then the others may not get a car like that but they have their own car yes which they now need to identify that's called self discovery yes to be able to identify what's the car you've been given what's what's it that you've been gifted with and everybody has been gifted with something also to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video i've designed a special free worksheet just for this video the worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something the worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results if you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there rule number five embrace your uniqueness the one thing that i've learned over the years is that we are all so different our lives are so different our situations are so different our backgrounds are so different our upbringing is so different the journey of our life up until now for each one of us is so different compared to somebody else and therefore it's so important that we don't judge our own life or the lives of others by comparing them with someone else's life here's an example if mr a can sprint a distance of 10 kilometers in 1 hour whereas mr b covers the same distance in 1 and a half hour which one of the two would you call faster and healthier the answer obviously would be mr a now what if i tell you that mr a had a prepared track to run on while mr b did it by walking on a sandy path i think our answer will now change and we probably think that mr b is fitter and let's say we come to know that actually mr a is 75 years old while b is only 20 here we go our answer changes again and we now think that the 75 year old mr a is healthier guess what mr a weighs 60 kg whereas mr b 125 kg which makes it really hard for him to run who do you think did well oh my goodness Now we correct ourselves again as we favor Mr B. The more we get to know about the strengths and limitations of Mr A and B respectively, our opinions and judgments about who is better keep changing. And isn't life like that as well guys? We form opinions about others so quickly, so hastily, so impulsively, so superficially without knowing much about them or their situations. We end up judging people, labeling people and miss out on connecting to and encouraging the immense potential that they may have. Life is not the same for all. Some may not be as talented as others but may get better opportunities and thus scale up very fast whereas others despite being super talented keep struggling just to make the ends meet kehte hain na ye kismat mehlon mein raaj karti hai aur kai baar hunar sadkon par tamasha karte rehta hai some may have more resources whereas others can't find any source to fall back on each one has different problems and so no one solution can work for all just like one size of clothing doesn't fit all so do not judge others journey without knowing more do not judge your own life by looking at someone else's or comparing your situation with someone else's you are you and they are they your life is your life and theirs is theirs do take inspiration from their journey 
in a way that you can enrich yours. And always remember, life is the most difficult exam. Many people fail because they try to copy others, not realizing that everyone has a different question paper. Rule number six, live a balanced life. How many of you breathe? I am sorry for asking that question. How many of you have been breathing for the last couple of minutes as I started this talk? I'm sure all of you have. How many of you are conscious of your breathing? Mindful of your breathing? I don't think so, any of us. How many of you use an Apple Watch? Any of you here? And do you know that on an Apple Watch there's a facility which gives you, giving you reminders after every one hour? Time to breathe. Yeah, if you use an Apple Watch, you know that it gives you a reminder after every one hour, time to breathe and focus and being mindful of your breathing. Ladies and gentlemen, none of us in the last one odd hour of, shall I say, through the day, have been conscious of our breathing. Now imagine when you start breathing and you just keep breathing in and in and in and in and in. Can you live? No. And imagine if you start breathing out and you breathe 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 out. Can you live? No. Can you imagine how life is fashioned in such an incredible, sophisticated, refined rhythm? The rhythm of breathing. When we talk about life, we talk about the rhythm of breathing. We're so unconsciously this taking in and this giving out. This taking in and this giving out. If we just keep taking in, we choke up. And if we just keep giving out, we choke up. What an incredible balance life has to teach us. What an incredible rhythm simply our breathing has to teach us. That life can't just be a life of takers where we just keep taking, keep taking, just taking or taking. Nor can life be just giving, 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 giving. The rhythm of breathing gives us an incredible message. Take in, to give out, have, to share, grab, to care. That incredible balance, that incredible equation is what makes life amazing. Rule number seven, ask the right questions. I've done three talks in three cities in Bombay, in India. Early, late morning, like about nine-ish, I've spoken in Bangalore, in India. After that, was over, come to the airport, go to Chennai for another one, finish that, and come back to Mumbai, and straight from the airport, go to another. I've done three talks in three cities in a day. What do you, if I snap well? You're technically right, I did. But you're practically wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I don't snap like that. You can interact with me all the time. I don't snap like that. But I'm a human body and a human machine. In your relationships, ladies and gentlemen, I make a humble appeal to all of you and beg of you, life is short. It's very short. Don't mess up with people, the closest people to you. Give time to them and understand them. They may, be te you, they may have said something here and there and you may be technically right. Okay, look at the hidden mango. Yes, your husband or your wife may not love you and that's technically right. But there may be a hidden mango, why? Find that out before you brand them. Your son or daughter may not listen to you and you may be completely technically right that they don't obey you. But find out the hidden mango. Why are they doing what they are doing? They are doing that is clear. Everybody knows it. It doesn't need two pence worth of common sense. Is it a rocket science to understand that? Is it a rocket science to understand you're not behaving right? Any damned fool can understand it. It needs intelligence and maturity to go behind the technical rightness and look for the practical rightness. It, looks, it needs maturity and wisdom to start seeing behind the scene. To say, why is this person not loving me? Why is this person behaving like that? Why is this person not treating me right? And if you do that, believe me, hand on my heart, your love for whoever you love will go so deep 
and your relationship with whoever you relate to will be so profound because it's based on maturity, not judgmentalism. Rule number eight, focus on the goodness. There are five levels of people. On level one, the lowest level, is a person who only sees bad in others. For heaven's sake, that guy just cannot see any good. Anyone here like that? I don't think so. We're not so bad that we just can't see any good. Some people just can't see any... You know, it's like when you like someone, even if the guy does the biggest crime, you say, no, maro di karoche, aja. You like him. But when you don't like someone, even if he does the good, best thing, you don't like him. And if you have that experience, if you just don't like someone, even if he has all the good qualities, you just can't like him. There are some people on that lowest level, they only focus on the bad, they can't see the good. A level higher are those who see the good and the bad, but conveniently ignore the good and focus on the bad. How often it happens when we live with people, there's so many good things in them, but conveniently we neglect the good things and only focus on the bad. My husband digs the nose. Okay. <laughs> he digs his nose, but he also does many other good things. How come you forgot all of those and only water digging? How come you only saw that? How come you only saw that? You know? We conveniently neglect the good and focus on the bad. The third category of people are those who see good and bad equally and they're neutral. They're not concerned. Good, bad, they're in their own world. The fourth category are those who see the good and bad. They choose to ignore the bad or deal with the bad and focus on the good. If you want to like a person, you have to be on level four. If you want to like a person, if you're on level two, where you're ignoring the good and focusing on the bad, how will you like that person? And how will that relationship be deep? When you're on level four, where you choose to ignore the bad, or if the need be, deal with the bad and focus on the good. And the fifth level is those who only see good. That's God and spiritually enlightened individuals who will only see good in others. Anybody here who's on level one only seeing bad can raise your hand? Nobody? Okay, thank you. Anybody is here on level five only seeing good? If you raise your hand, I don't believe you. Oh, sorry, madam, I do believe you. I'm so, so I didn't see you raise your hand. I was just joking, sorry. I'm, I, I truly believe you, madam. I, I didn't see you raise your hand, please. I just happened to say you by thinking nobody is. Thank you, madam, we really appreciate. Can we give a loud round of applause for her? My God, amazing. Okay, now in your close relationships, in your close relationships, how many of you find yourself many times stuck at level two? Level two where you kind of look at the bad and forget the good that they have? Thank you. In our relationships, we need to come to level four. Well, number nine, follow the truth. You know, when we're talking about science and spirituality, I, I feel that I never felt there is a divide or a difference. Right. I feel the purpose is one. Right. When we look at both having the same purpose, which is to unveil the truth. Correct. Science is trying to unveil the truth. Right. And spirituality is wanting to unveil the truth. Correct. So how are we different in our purpose, correct? The methodologies may be different. Like in science, I may use uh, uh, equipment, I may use right. instruments, I may yes. use telescopes, I may use measurements, I may use so many different things right. to be able to figure out what that truth is. Correct. correct? And I will. Yes. I will. Phenomenally will. Correct? So from science and from all what I see, I have facts. Not complete facts yet. Which is why it's always evolving. We call it a relative science. Right. It's not an absolute science. Absolutely. Mendeleev's periodic table. Right? Yes. The values were changing, right? We found out the truth later. We assigned a certain value. We said, sorry sir, this is not what it is. This is the actual value. 
So it's changing. So uh, could I say that this is it? May not be. If I get an instrument which is better than what I have today, I'll probably explore another layer of that same facet, right? Now, that's where I get the facts. Great, I need those facts. When we talk about spirituality, it is giving the purpose of those facts. So, we should be working in tandem. Spirituality and science, science were meant to work in tandem. One looking at unveiling the truth by giving us factual data. And one saying, giving the philosophical side, saying, what is the purpose of this data? Correct. What is the purpose of this existence? And both are two important dimensions to the same truth. Absolutely. You know, so I, I feel... Uh, That's an artificial divide. It's an artificial divide and, and it's rigidity on both parts, both sides, that we can't come together to sit and say, hey, look, uh, like, like I'll, I'll give you an example. Should a doctor, should a doctor repair a car? That's not a skill set. Yeah. Should a car mechanic try, uh, try and do an open heart surgery? No. So if I, this is my area of expertise, let me do that much and not delve into something further. Let somebody else with this other area of expertise come together and let's pool it all together to unveil the truth together, adding our own dimension to it. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is be grateful. I want to just offer to you three essential principles of gratitude being mindful and grateful. The first one being recognizing. Recognizing all the wonderful things that have been done to us. Believe me, we are in such a, such a rush most of the time. We're not even thoughtful and mindful to recognize the incredible gifts that have been showered upon us. How many of you had loving parents? Most all of us. How many of us feel that we've been receiving so much affection from our parents? Yes. How many of you have loving spouses? You might want to or may not want to raise your hands. That is completely up to you. It's your choice, ladies and gentlemen, whether you want to raise your hands for this. How many of you had wonderful teachers? Good. How many of you had some amazing friends? Great. How many of you have come in contact with some wonderful spiritual personalities? Great. And how many of us feel that our life is a collective sum total of the so many wonderful things that have been done to us by so many in our lives? Show of hands, please. All of us, isn't it? So many of us have been recipients and received so much from our families, from our friends, from our teachers, from saints. I'll tell you something. To be very honest, what the world needs today is transformed individuals. We have a lot of affluence. We have a lot of influence. We have a lot of information. We are in an age which is laden, laden with information. You know, what we truly need is transformed individuals who can utilize what we have for constructive causes in the world, who can truly bring light to the world, who can truly bring hope to the world. There's enough information. What we would need is transformation. And what better a way but to have a spiritual culture to bring that transformation to individuals. And in fact, I don't want to say it, but I must, that spirituality happens to be one of those major ways to bring transformation in. I see so many people following different parts of spirituality and change and transform to not just be a part of competition but be a part of contribution. Along with competition, they're also looking at contribution. Youth is the hope for the world. Youngsters, young men and ladies are the ones who can change the shape of planet Earth, who can change the way the world functions bringing in incredible hope and light to the world. I must tell you, oh God, <laughs> just how the world is. When you are high up, you don't know what to say there. 
you are not just i was in america i was just in america in february i was flying from uh, uh, new york jfk airport to go to uh, detroit and it was an airline called spirit airlines and in the morning they were selling alcohol so i asked the stewardess i guess your airline is in very high spirit you know <laughs> they were selling spirits in the morning itself <laughs> oh goodness turbulence not in control take off not in control landing not in control choice in control the take off of life is our birth no control i can't change my looks i was born the way i was i am some are born in a wealthy family some are born in a poor family some are born very smart and handsome some are not that so handsome some are fair some are dark some are green some are yellow some are born in the us some are born in indian some are born in america hindu family some are born in muslim family some are born in jain family some are born in jew families what control do you have over the take off did you choose your mothers and fathers ye mummy hogi ye papa hoga bhagwan pehle jodi laga dena main aaya hu main aane wala hai mera avatar lene wala hai main tum thoda thodi thodi jodi bana dena dono Do you have any control? No control at all. And in the landing, death. This tremendous hope in life. God is the greatest hope in life. You don't have to be hopeless. Failure is not the end of the world. Someone insulting you is not the end of the world. A health crisis is not the end of the world. A divorce, a breakup is not the end of the world. And the turbulence is in your control. problems during the journey of your life from birth to death take off to landing as the journey of your life goes there's clouds there's wind speeds tremendous turbulence which is completely beyond your control are people in your control what people say about you behind your back is in your control what people think of you is it in your control you can try to be good but can you control people In New York, when I was there recently, one guy came up to me after my talk and said, "You are the egoistic person, the most egoistic person I've ever seen." I don't even know him. I am a human being. Even I have feelings and emotions. Can't just come and slap you on your face, and I won't even use the words he used against me straight on my face. And then wrote a wrong email to me. That email is on my phone. Just in case you feel I'm lying, you can come and check out. God bashing me with words like, "Oof! What can I do?" when a health crisis comes cancer happens to someone for no fault of his or hers what can you do it's completely out of control when an examiner asks a googly question in the question paper you all know what can you do <laughs> what can you do nothing right therefore between this journey Called birth and death, there's only one thing in our control: our choices. The choices we make are completely in our control. Choice करना भी मुश्किल हो जाता है कि तो ये फिर take advantage of the time in between, you know. And thus I say, when you're born, people love you. You don't know, manu, lulu, laju, papu. And when you're people, when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. <laughs> Stunning how life is. जिंदा होते तो प्रेम क्यों नहीं करते मालूम नहीं जन्म पे प्रेम करते मरने क्या बोलता अच्छा था बेचारा अच्छा था जिंदा होता तो मुंह बंद क्यों रखा बोलना चाहिए था ना तभी अच्छा था मरने के बाद अच्छे थे वैसे बेचारे यू नो काइंड ऑफ रियली अमेजिंग हाउ पीपल कैन बी ऑफ कोर्स व्हेन वी टॉकिंग अबाउट मेजरमेंट्स वी आर मेजरिंग इन ऑन इन वन वे यस करेक्ट सो द द डेटा एंड द स्टैटिस्टिक्स वुड बी इन वन स्पेस यस सो इन दैट पर्टिकुलर स्पेस वी वुड से वी लिस्ट हियर Yes. If we start measuring basing some other yardstick as a yardstick okay. of measurement, That's probably right. have a different, whole different okay. statistics available to us. Nevertheless, having said that, I think uh, I, I, I often say uh, whether you drive a BMW or a Rolls Royce, it's not the car that happens; it's the journey. when the focus shifts overtly to the car than the journey you're compromising with your experience mm. car is important a good car is great no problem but when your focus is overtly on that you're compromising with your journey uh i say often it's not an iphone or a samsung 
it's the quality of your conversation on that phone that gives you that experience of Correct. happiness Correct. but when your attention moves from the quality of conversations to the quality of your phone overtly you're kind of compromising with your experience i often say that it's not the watch that whether it's a rolex or a the sort or whatever it is you know or a george or money whatever brand of rado or a breitling whatever watch you wear i really don't think it's the watch that gives you that happiness it's how you utilize that time on that watch that gives you that experience but when your focus shifts from utilizing your time to your watch and flaunting that watch i think we are compromising with our experience I don't think it's the house that's made of bricks and cement that brings us the happiness with the weather it's in Malabar hill with the most fancy uh, furnishings inside on in a massive space I think it's the quality of our relationships in that house and that brings us happiness it's the home that brings us happiness so it's not india or america or any place in the world it's anybody anybody who prioritizes things achievements of things and starts equating the quality of our, their life with those things okay will definitely have a compromised standard of experience whereas those who prioritize the quality of their journey the quality of their relation and not saying the thing shouldn't be there absolutely not saying that i'm just saying equating happiness to that is where the problem is, is where the problem is because then you know today the, and 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 it also comes from what's considered a social social standard of being being accepted as be the social standard of being accepted as cool today you're not judged for who you, you're not accepted for who you are you accept for the car you drive or the home, the area you live in or the class of um, uh, an airplane that you fly on and a flight that you fly on so in a in a society where the standards of your success are so shallow then the pressure to conform that if i don't have this if i don't if i'm not at this party i'm this form one the fear of missing out i'm missing out on something big thing big thing but who created it a standard that we made that this is what happiness means right but if we if we understand that there are finer things that bring us happiness these things have utility value let's use them use the best stuff no problem Use the best stuff. Who say you don't have a Rolls Royce? But if you think Rolls Royce makes you happy, I'm sorry. You know, have the fanciest house. Who says no one have it? But if you think it's the house that makes you happy, I'm not sure if bricks and cement can make me happy. <laughs> you know. What does someone like you mm-hmm. do to meditate? How do you meditate? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I came to the monastery, the meditation I was taught was mantra meditation, mm. which is chanting on beads. So mm. I chant a mantra, mm. and as I began the process, I realized how challenging it was to be present into the sound of the mantra, and to be totally in a space in a zone of thoughtlessness where there's nothing bothering your mind and you. completely present and listening to the sound and totally absorbed you know in the sound i realized that it was a massive uphill task and i think it comes that the challenge comes from the fact that we've got so used to multitasking mm. that our mind functions on 20 tracks mm. so when we are just on the meditation track there are 19 other tracks to deal with yeah You know, you have your personal life, you have relationship issues, you have your professional issues. There's so many things going on. You have issues coming from family, so much going on in the country. There's so much that's occupying our mental space. Mm. And when you actually want to get onto the track of meditation by kind of just putting all of this in the back seat, it becomes practically impossible. Mm. And a lot of people tell me this, mm. and when they're trying to meditate, this is what happens to them. Mm. and i share my journey with them this is exactly what happened to me when i started mm, mm. it's been 25 years now every single day without one day's gap one and a half half hours every day and i and i tell them that it's not that it's not a challenge today it would be very high headed to say that okay i've reached the state of enlightenment when i said for meditation everything's kind of there and i'm totally absorbed very high headed i feel to say that but i did a few things that i feel can benefit those who want to really get into that a deeper state of meditation i 
I look at meditation in two ways. A is the meditation meditation as in the practice and B is everything that we do in our life as meditation. Mm. You know? And I prefer to work more on everything in my life as a meditation which feeds into my practice of meditation. 100%. But you do know? not neglect the practice. No, do not neglect the practice for sure. Yeah. So, uh, I'll tell you what I do for instance. Uh, one meal a day, I just eat by myself. Two meals I take with my friends, my some of my monk, monk friends, we discuss, chat, eat. One meal is just by myself. The reason being, I want to be present, mindful, in the moment, to savor the entire experience of touching, feeling, smelling, tasting that food. I avoid forks and spoons as much as is possible because I want to touch mm. and feel that experience of the food. Mm. Now, the reason I do it is because it just means no phones, no books, nobody to talk to, and just being there eating. Correct? So what I'm doing is by just eating that one meal by myself, training my mind mm. to be in the present. Like we are talking now. There's three meetings lined up for me tonight. Mm. And there's a restaurant called Candy and Greens at Breach Candy. The family is a very close friend, you know. So they've just opened up a new rooftop terrace. I've been getting message after message. Could you come down today evening for dinner? Right. But it's not on my mind. It's not on my mind. Nothing outside of our conversation between you and me right now is on my mind. So why why do I do it? It's because right now I'm training my mind to be in the present. Mm -hmm. When I used to be in the bathroom, I would sing. Like a big thing for me used to, of course earlier I would sing a lot of cinema and movie songs. And now I sing some spiritual songs, bhajans, whatever. And then one day I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is not right. Because neither am I into the singing, nor am I into the experience of bathing. Mm. So if I'm singing, I'm missing the experience of bathing. And if I'm bathing, I'm not into my singing. Mm. So why am I doing two things at the same time? I stopped singing. Just focusing on the experience of the water coming down my body and experiencing that. So, so to me, these little things uh, through the day matter a lot to me. And I think that's, a, that's more of meditation to me. Mm. Because then what I do here feeds into my mainstream practice of meditation mm. and uh, what I do here feeds into the little things as well. So it's kind of a loop, mm -hmm. one feeding into other. How do people find that thing? How do you recommend when there's a lot of family pressure on them? How did they find the thing? I find a lot of times it's an issue with the system. Correct. Okay. Like for example, uh, the industry, the corporate world is only picking up people from the top rated universities. The industry is only picking up students who have the best grades. Now, if you have people who are being picked up based on your university or based on your grades and your marks and your academic performance, then uh, guess what parents are going to put pressurize kids with? You better get the marks. You better get the grades. You better get to the best university. Correct? And guess what the educational institutions do? It's a demand and supply system. If, this, if the demand uh, of the industry is grades and the parents are pushing to get grades, the educational systems are driven to make kids get grades. Now imagine if the industry changes and the corporate world redefines saying we don't hire grades. We hire passion. We hire, kid, we hire candidates for their passion. Okay? Now what are the parents going to say? Don't worry about the grades, sir. Look at your passion. And what is the education system going to provide? how to look at your passion, correct? It's a, at the end of the day, it's about the demand and supply, really, you know? So in terms of how does a kid or how does an individual figure that out for himself or herself, number one is there is a voice from within us, correct? And there's a voice from within us that's constantly resonating with our soul saying, I love this, you know? I may be great at it or I may not be great at it, either or whichever way. But I love this. I'm in absolute love with this. I can wake up early in the morning to do this and I can go to bed like late in the night if I were doing this. I know that that's what it's really in sync with my soul, you know. Now, what happens with that is sometimes it's multiple things. It's three, four, five different things for people, right? And now that be the case, that be the case then I think it's also over a period of time, we need to funnel it down, to narrow it down to that one thing. It's like, it's like be, being in love, right? 
a guy or a girl is in love with somebody there's three four different people they're trying and seeing and they're kind of exploring but one person who like really really strikes that chord so one thing is to listen to your inner conscience constantly people who are not in tune with their inner radar are not going to be able to find out what their passion is if you're living in life only catering to the outside demands and not introspecting not going deep to listen to your conscience and your inner voice where's the question of figuring out what the passion is you have to see what resonates with your soul do any of you remember losing a rank in an exam during your school or college days i remember losing my first rank in a final exam just by a couple of marks does anyone remember losing a job opportunity or a promotion at work and feeling very low about it i'm sure some of you may have recall losing in a sports event or maybe losing a role in a theatrical performance or maybe losing a sought after position of power and what to speak of losing a relationship or losing a dear one as much as losing something or losing someone can be painful disappointing and frustrating it just happens to be a part of our real life in this real world there are things in life we end up losing not because we didn't give our best or not because we were complacent because there are forces beyond our scope beyond our abilities to control and it's very important that we accept this reality never lose hope the one thing that makes life a painful ordeal is hopelessness a boy once entered a room where he saw four lit up candles illuminating the space with their soft glow the first candle spoke to the boy i am the candle of love there was a time when things were used and people were loved but today things are loved and people are used to get those things nobody values me any longer saying this the candle of love went off The second candle said, "I am the candle of peace in a world where everything is being torn down to pieces. Who values peace?" And the second candle went off as well. The third candle turned to the boy and said, "I am the candle of trust. If there be anything that's really hard to find in a selfish world, it's trust. What's the point in me staying lit up?" The little boy started sobbing as he saw the flame of the candle of trust. go off and the room getting darker the fourth candle spoke in a reassuring tone don't cry my boy i am the candle of hope as long as i am lit there'll never be darkness things may be dim but never dark as long as i am lit you can pick me up and light the other three candles of love peace and trust and brighten the room up again The boy wiped his tears and with a smile lighting up his face lit up the room as he lit the three candles with the candle of hope ladies and gentlemen no matter what you lose in life never lose hope when you want to achieve success in your career in your academics in your business in your profession we will fail and that's the example of the giraffe when the baby giraffe is born falls from such a high distance straight on the ground the mother positions herself right about the baby giraffe and guess what she does first gives it a hard kick bacche ka janam hota hai aur maa ke khat se laat marti hai to bachcha samajhta nahi abhi to aaya hai zindagi mein matlab laat mar rahi hai kaun laat mara laat ka matlab kya hai malum nahi usko sacha na ek jhatka milta hai usko so as it just coming out of that impact jhatka the mother gives a bad second harder kick now the guy understands अगर मैं कुछ किया नहीं तो ये चलता रहेगा सिलसिला सो दिस बेबी जिराफ स्टार्ट्स गेटिंग अप ऑन इट्स वॉबली लेग्स यू नो ऑन इट्स वॉबली लेग्स एंड एज द बेबी जिराफ गेट्स अप ऑन द वॉबली लेग थोड़ा खड़ा होकर खड़ा होना सीखा ना फैड एक और लात मारती है माँ फिर गिर के ही गेट्स अप एंड स्टार्ट रनिंग एंड देन द मदर जिराफ गोज हक्स द बेबी एंड स्टार्ट किसिंग द बेबी यू नो वाई because a baby giraffe's flesh is very soft and supple and hyenas and lions love it the mother knows that i can't be with the baby giraffe all the time but to go and get food for the baby how would i protect it isliye pehle hi ek aisi laat maro ki ye uthna sikhe aur phir jaise thoda utha na to ek aur laat maro to yaad rahe aur phir uthna sikhe zindagi bhi maa mother giraffe jaisi hai कई बार लात मारती है वी फेल वी शुड गेट अप 
and we'll fail again. We should get up. And like I always say, don't just go through life, grow through life. Do you know something? In the game of life, you're playing a cricket match against an entity called the mind. No one on planet Earth can stop you from accomplishing and achieving what you want if you can bat against the googlies that the mind bowls at you. How many of you have experienced that the mind bowls googlies? Good. When it comes to exercising and jogging, how many of you know that the mind bowls googlies? Majja. Soja. How many of you have trouble in studying? Raise your hands as students. <laughs> My God. And you come here, you hear all of these things. Don't get distracted by WhatsApp. Don't get distracted by internet pornography. Don't get distracted by Twitter. Don't get distracted by Facebook. Study. Don't get distracted by birds to do bird watching. <laughs> Study. All these distractions. Idhar aake kuch upadesh dete hai, kuch log sadhu log aapko. Uspe baad bhi fail hota hai. So one father was telling his son, Dekh, dekh, tere class mein ho Lucy hai na Lucy. Dekh, dekh, first aai hai hu. Aur tu nala ek fail ho gaya. Ho bola, dekh, dekh ke hi fail ho gaya mein usko. Dekh, dekh ke hi to fail hoa mein usko. I'll tell you something. My God. Why? Because the mind doesn't want you to win the game of life. How many of you wanted to wake up early in the morning? Raise your hands. Only wanted, I asked. <laughs> wanted to wake up early in the morning. And how many of you have done something called as setting an alarm clock? And then after setting the alarm clock, that's an alarm. <laughs> Whether you want it or not, it rings. And when it rings, the mind puts its first googly. What does the mind do? By putting the googly makes you clean bold when you do the first snooze. You are out. You are out. If you snooze, you are out. I want to say one thing. Just one. And probably this will change the direction of your life. You know something when you snooze the alarm? What happens? You decide to give in to the mind's ball. And this is how your morning begins. By giving in to the mind. Saberi ki shuruvat hoti hai is baller se clean bold hoke. Aage kya match jitenge? Ye to din ki shuruvat hai by giving in. And it's no problem giving in. Sleeping five minutes extra is no problem. The problem is you develop the attitude of giving in. You tell yourself that what I decided last night is not as important. What is important is what the mind says. Because we listen. I'll tell you something, my humble advice. Because it's not just about getting up in the morning, it's about every aspect of life. Whether it's your work, if you're working, whether it's your study, if you're studying, whatever we do. The problem is, it's not about one thing. It reflects in every area of life. That's why I say that. अगर चार बजे नहीं उठना मालूम है ना अपने से नहीं होता चार बीस का अलार्म लगाओ लेकिन चार बीस को उठो डोंट अलाउ दैट स्नूस वॉट इज द मोस्ट सेल्फिश वन लेटर्ड वर्ड आई इज न एवरी थिंग रिवॉल्व अराउंड आई आई फोन आई पैड आई पॉड एंड द मैन सेज आई पेड <laughs> what do you do? Everything revolves around the I. And what does I stand for? I stands for expectations. I should be treated like this. I should be loved like this. I should be dealt with like this. I should be respected like this. I should be given these many marks. I should not be given this. You're all leading a life of super high expectations. Everything revolves around my opinions my desires my likes my dislikes i love this i want this i don't want this i i i i i you think life will be a very happy life when it revolves around i 
from our childhood we have grown up like this we've only learned to take and everyone has to fulfill my expectations everything has to be up to my expectations therefore when people come to god people come to a temple also they're only asking give me what i want no one comes to say i love you i want to, i want to give you when the president of the united states john f kennedy came up to his stage for his first presidential speech his voice rumbled into the public address system when he said ask not what the country can do for you ask what you can do for the country and so we are saying ask not what god can do for you ask what you can do for god but no one asks that because the i is so big my expectations my desires my things are so powerful that even when i come to a temple and ring a bell all i'm doing is asking the more we lead a life of i our i will always be frustrated because people don't exist in this world to just fulfill your expectations therefore ladies and gentlemen the most selfish one lettered word is i which stands for expectations and therefore avoid this word how do you avoid this word be realistic in your expectations apekshaye karne mein koi problem nahi hai but understand that not everyone will fulfill your expectation and secondly avoid this word i by trying to serve others you know why because when you want to be served you're dependent on people they may not serve you when you want to serve who can stop you when you want respect people may not respect you but when you want to give respect who can stop you when you want to be loved you may not be loved but when you want to give love who can stop you when you want in charity people may not give you in charity but when you want to give charity who can stop you and therefore learn to begin your journey from i to you the more you want for yourself you'll remain frustrated the more you want to give you will remain happy there is a concept called sledging in cricket where the opponent team comes and gives gali to the batsman gali they try to distract them and take their focus away one thing that sachin is adored for in the history of cricket is sledging hasn't bothered him this man is cool are you cool when people do sledging against you in the game of life are you cool or you lose your cool there will always be people who are out of control can you stop a guy from criticizing you can you stop an opponent team from sledging kuch nahi kar sakte it's called things which are out of our control people are out of our control sometimes are situations in your control many times no the guy who was batting was expecting an in swing ball and that's what the bowler bowled and one gush of wind an in swing becomes an out swing and is caught out lot of things situations people are just out of our control how many of you think question paper is in your control <laughs> and when things go wild na i'll tell you what happens with us this is what happens with us you know this is what happens with us see see how it forms up we react the stimulus of a person sledging against us criticizing pulling us down envious of us conspiring politicking makes us react and form out hey to we start reacting also and look at this this is also sealed The question is do you want to be a seven up can or a oxy cool bottle of water and i'm sure a lot of us would say is prabhu ji humko to dusra kuch sochta hi nahi hai prabhu ji and thus 
in our life we will always have a stimulus and we can choose to respond because between the stimulus and response is our choice a great personality is not born in the maternity ward a great personality is born by the choices that one makes and therefore when there are all kinds of stimuli we have to learn how to respond if we are not strong spiritually it is impossible if we are not strong culturally it is impossible all this sounds great and good and we know yes but i want to do it i can't be a can of soda i want to be a water bottle but is it so easy no that is why coming here is so important that is why this foundational ethics of spirituality are so crucial in this age as you all of you are going to be successful in your own areas of life if not cricket per se and thus we have to learn how to respond reading inspirational and motivational books uh, and i also think because the online world is so big today the online platform is so big today whether it's facebook whether it's instagram whether it is twitter whether it is youtube these massive platforms where there's so much material available so much motivational stuff available so much inspiration available as soon as we feel low we may have our choice speakers we may have our choice gurus we may have our choice experts by listening to whom we feel motivated whom by listening to whom we feel uplifted by listening to whom we feel energized we should regularly on a proactive basis listen to podcasts watch videos or read books that can keep us going this is of course not when you have when somebody goes to the extreme end of ending their lives can't read a book or watch a video there but that did happen we posted a video on facebook this reposted a video this morning where we were talking about an individual who wanted to give up his life in cincinnati ohio in the united states of america he was a university student and as he was in that moment of committing suicide hanging himself with his head in the noose and there was a notification on his phone a whatsapp notification the guy happened to see that notification it happened to be one of the videos we had made and he watched those videos for 4 to 8 hours non stop all online stuff available from our channels online and decided i shouldn't commit suicide decided to keep going which is why i think that the third thing to boost our coping mechanism is to look at online motivational material as well it's a proactive thing to constantly keep looking for good material so that we feel inspired motivated challenges and problems are going to be there for everybody like i said earlier but we'll be stronger to face that because you made it this far in a video I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Jay Shetty, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When you protect your purpose, your purpose protects you. Now, I want to unpack that. What I mean by that is your purpose is like a rare jewel and a rare gemstone and